All right, serial dilutions. This is a topic that comes up a lot of times in labs, but the calculations can sometimes throw your brain for a little bit of a loop. So serial dilutions are uh, dilutions that are done in sequence. So you make a stock solution. Let's say this is your stock solution. You've dissolved uh, 50 grams of whatever it is in 100 milliliters of water. So that gives you a particular concentration of this stock solution here. Perhaps you're instructed to take a 5 milliliter sample of this stock solution. When you take that sample, your molarity of that sample is not changing. So if it's uh, 50 grams, let's say it's a, a 1 molarity solution, for example. If you take out, um, if it's a 1 molar solution and you take out 100 milliliters, that would mean you got 0.1 moles in your little pipette thing that you are taking out of this beaker and putting into your second solution. So if we take out, so if this is a one molar solution and we use our little pipette thingy here and we take out 100 milliliters, a 100 milliliter sample and we put it in here. That means my little blop, my little 100 mil blop here, I have 0.1 moles. Where did I get that number? Well, volume times molarity gives me moles. Think about that for a second. 0.1 liters, 1 liter per 1 mole gives me 0.1 moles in this little blop. But let's say that our instructions are to dilute this sample up to a volume of say 250 milliliters. My mole here, my mole of solution is not changing, but my volume is. This means that my little 100 milliliter puddle here is going to be increased. We're going to add to it. So if I want to dilute it up to a volume of say 250 milliliters, I've got to increase my volume from 100 to 250. So we're adding another, another 150 milliliters. So that means that the new solution that I've created over here no longer has this one molar concentration. While I still have the same number of moles, now I have an increased volume, which, is it, which results in a decreased concentration. Uh, serial, the term serial dilutions applies that you do this not once, but not twice, but three or four times. Uh, for example here, I wrote up a problem, just kind of made it up off the top of my head, so we'll see how it goes. And uh, this is an example of a serial dilution. So it tells you that you're making a stock solution. This is the original, the kind that you get off the shelf to do a lab with. And it takes 38 grams of calcium bromide and we dissolve it in 350 mils of water. Uh, then it tells us that we're going to remove a 5 milliliter sample from the stock and dilute it to 250. So I'm taking some moles out of my stock solution and I'm putting them in a larger volume. Then we do it again. And the problem asks us for the concentration of the final solution. So this last one here, two dilutions that we're going to have to do to this original stock solution. But before I can move any further, I got to know what the concentration of that stock solution is. So 38 grams of calcium bromide in 350 mils of water. So for this, we're going to need molarity. That's moles per liter. Well, I have neither at this juncture. I have grams and milliliters. So let's get to converting. 38 grams of calcium bromide to get from grams to moles, I need their formula masses. Calcium has a formula mass of 40.08 plus two bromides at 79.90 each. Gives us a formula mass of 199.8 grams per mole. So 38 divided by that, oops. 38 divided by that gives us 0 0.1901 moles of our calcium bromide divided by 350 mils, so that's 0.35 liters. Zero point five four three molar solution of calcium bromide. This is my stock solution. So this is the original one, but we're going to do some stuff to it. 
if I take out 5 milliliters from this stock solution, let's figure out just how many moles am I taking with me. So we'll call this D1, dilution 1. 5 milliliters out of that original stock solution. Well, already discussed milliliters, not good enough. So let's convert to liters there. Let's go from liters to moles. Okay, we're taking it out of this solution here. So 5 times 0 0.543 divided by 1,000, 0 0.002715 moles of calcium bromide. That's how many moles I'm taking with me. So I stuck my pipette in the stock solution. I drew up 5 milliliters. That 5 milliliter volume contains 0.002715 moles of calcium bromide. So I put that in another beaker. I'm going to add to it until I reach a volume of 250 milliliters. So this is my volume for my first dilution here. It is 250 milliliters. But to get a concentration, can't do mils, got to do liters. So our first dilution has a molarity of 0 0.01. 086 molar calcium bromide solution. So look how much my molarity changed just from that first dilution. So again, when I take a volume out of a stock solution, I'm taking with me a particular amount of moles. That amount of moles is not going to change. The only variable that we really have in these uh, serial dilutions is that volume. So Continuing on with the problem, I have a second serial dilution. This is often the case in purity tests when you have to uh, run it through a mass spec or some such. They like very small concentrations. Otherwise, the instrument gets kind of overwhelmed. So we're going to have to do this again. I'm going to stick my pipette into this solution, my D1, my first dilution solution. Ooh, that rhymed. And I'm going to draw up a 5 milliliter sample out of this tank. So let's see just how many moles I'm taking along for the ride. So we drew up 5 milliliters again. Don't like milliliters, got to go to liters. But this time I'm going to use this molarity because that's where I got my moles is from this second, or excuse me, this first dilution. It's the second solution that I've made. Five times point oh one oh eight six divided by one thousand gives us five point four three times ten to the negative fifth moles of calcium bromide that I have brought along for the ride on this second dilution. Again, the problem tells me that we are diluting it to a volume of 250 milliliters. So this many moles is going to take up residence in 0.25 liters of solution. So my final answer here, what is the concentration of the final solution? Okay, so that's the third one. We had a stock. We drew up 5 milliliters, diluted it to 250. Here's my second solution. Took 5 mils out of that diluted it to 250 and my final solution has a concentration of 2.172 times 10 to the negative fourth molar calcium bromide. So that's a pretty weak solution. Not a whole lot in there. But that's how you approach serial dilution problems. The amount of moles does not change. You're simply transplanting them from one beaker to another. So figure out how many moles you've drawn up into your pipette. And you're dumping them into your secondary beaker or container, whatever kind, and then you're changing the volume. When you have a secondary dilution, if you're taking your 
sample from that first dilution, this is the molarity. So you're sampling from this container. So don't be tempted to go back to that stock solution. Make sure you think, draw you a picture if you have to. Something like we did up top here. I, do that, I did that when I was in college. Sometimes I'd have to draw a picture just to make sure I knew where all my solutions were coming and going from. So, I hope that's a good introduction to you on serial dilutions, since sometimes it just gives the brain cause to fret. Uh, best of luck in calculating. Uh, please leave any questions you have in the comment boxes down below, and I will attempt to get those answered uh, with all haste. Good luck!